Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to my recap of Season 4, Episode 8 of Power. Lawyer Silver is woken in his sleep. It is the guard from downstairs letting him know that he has a guest, Ghost, the husband of the woman he was f***ing the night before. Ghost wants to know if Terry's heard anything about Turtle, so he ain't there for the good business. But Terry's like... Nope. On his way out, Ghost sees the earring on the floor. He's like, oh, I didn't know you had a lady. He, he's your lawyer, not your bestie. He didn't really tell you any of his personal business. But little do you know that his lady, not lady, just kicking it chick is your wife. Ghost tried to throw a little shade at Terry and was like, hey, you should reach out to Tasha. Maybe she could help you with a house cleaner. Yeah, he's already been reaching out to Tasha. He's been reaching out, running through. You don't really want Terry and Tasha to get in any further contact. They're having as much contact as humanly possible. The Jimenez siblings haven't responded to Tommy about his ass. Tommy's preparing to go to war. Dre's like, wait a minute. He tries to go to the Primeros. I have not really known what a Primero was for all of all of these seasons. They're like the middle managers of the drug game. They kept saying it and I was like, oh, these are really important people. I, I was really proud of myself. So Dre goes to talk to them. Dre's like, yeah, if the Connect says we go to war, we go to war. And everybody was like, mm, I don't know about that. The priest who's a Primero, he was like, yo, I don't have soldiers I have kids running my my product sir I don't know what point you were really trying to make there you didn't want to put guns in kids hands but you were comfortable putting drugs there Dre has to come up with some other way to keep Tommy out of this war over in teenage world Keisha and Tasha are hanging out at the house Tasha it seems like she's about to tell all her business to Keisha and I'm like ma'am y'all not really that great friends I would just think that if you were doing like you know some nefarious on your husband, you might not want to give Keisha, who's mad at you about what you did to her shop, you might not want to give her any ammo to hold over your head. But it's Raina to the rescue who comes in and is like, hey mom, look at this information about this really great school. Tasha's more concerned about the bruise on Raina's arm. She's like, what happened to you? Raina's like, oh, I bumped somebody at school. You don't get that kind of scar from getting bumped at school, baby girl. I need Tasha to do a little more investigating into the well-being of her daughter. And Tyreek... That little boy, he exhausts me. He's not hanging out with Kanan again yet. He's hanging out with Kanan's friends. They decide they're gonna rob some rich white lady's house. They're supposed to be stealing shit, which Tyreek was fine with, but then he finds out they're raping the lady or one of them is raping the lady and he's not okay with that. He has some moral code. So he goes upstairs, he calls out his friend by name. Dude is like, now I gotta kill the chick. Tyreek freaks out because he's an accomplice to murder. Tyreek runs out the house, leaving all sorts of fingerprints. The dude starts blowing up Tyreek's phone because obviously he just saw you murder someone and you don't know what this little boy is gonna do. You might need to kill his ass. Maybe this scared him straight and he's out of that life. When Tyreek finally gets home, he goes to his dad and he's like, hey, Rain has been talking about this school way up in the sticks. I think I might wanna go. Tyreek really could have gone home and said to his dad, I need you to help me out because if there's anybody on earth who could actually solve Tyreek's problem for him real quick it's his dad. Lorenz Tate who looks all of five years old is somewhere in Queens getting coffee with ghosts. They're gonna do some sort of photo op. Lorenz Tate takes them over to some building and he's like, hey, this is the vision that I have, but here's my issue. We've got these thugs on the block, these drug dealers, and we need to get this cleaned up. Do you think that there's, you know, some way for this to happen? Lorenz Tate is about to Clay Davis the hell out of Ghost. Ghost is his new stringer bell. So if I meet someone in a professional setting and they're introduced to me as a real estate mogul or the money man for a real estate team, I think, oh, they must know real estate really well. They must know developers. I would never think, I wonder if they can help me get the drugs cleaned up on the block that the first thing he asked ghost wasn't for hey i need this injection of funds or hey do you know somebody you could put me in contact with no councilman tate was like so we have this drug problem here because he knows who ghost really is and i make that stringer bell analogy also ghost is trying to get out the game in much the same way that Stringer Bell was trying to elevate beyond the game. Stringer Bell also tried to be a developer in Baltimore. Clay Davis crossed him and Stringer got all upset and went to Avon and was like, we're going to kill this dude. Avon was like, no, we're not killing a senator. You sound crazy. And Avon pointed out to Stringer, isn't it all possible that you're too smart for the drug game and not smart enough for the real world that you want to be a part of. And I think that's something that Ghost is going to have to confront because every legit type black dude that he runs into kind of gives him the same, 
Ghost knows the drug game in and out, but it's the only game he really knows. Anyway, Ghost sees the gang members on the corner. He turns to Dre like, hey, like, aren't these the corners that we, you know, traded for Julio? Dre was like, yep. He fills Ghost in on Tommy's meeting with the Jimenez siblings. And it's like, yeah, that didn't really go well. And we're on the brink of war. Sax, Black Donovan, and Angie are at Angie's house trying to figure out what to do about Mike. They finally come up with a story about how dirty Mike has been, but the problem is, is they can't prove anything. All they have is video surveillance from Truth, and that proves nothing. Individually, I don't know how bright these people are, but together, they come up with a plan where Sax is going to plant the seed with Mike that Angela is going to talk to Mock. Mike gets upset when Sax says Angie's going to talk to Mock, and he leaves and goes straight to Angie's house. Angie lets him in, which I'm like, girl, like, do you not know how this ends? They get to talking, and Angie gets to confessing. I have all this evidence against you. I have this. I have this. I have this. And I'm like, girl, why are you telling him all this tea? Because you about to go out like Greg. But then we cut to the FBI listening in. This is a setup for Mike. But my first question was, aren't all these people suspended? They're all official FBI again, just like that. Black Donovan and Sachs and Mock are all in the truck listening in. Donovan gets scared when Mike threatens Angela. He's like, I'm going in. Mock was like, no, no, you're not. And I'm like, sir, you just got your job back. Like, how are you making executive decisions over your boss? Mike and Angie are going back and forth. He's threatening to kill her. Angie turns around and gets a shot off. Angie's like, you don't really have to be just the killer you could also be a witness basically telling him to flip i'm on the fence on whether he knew what was about to happen that angie just set him up i don't know tommy rolls up on his crazy mom and is like hey who is my dad she's like we've been through this before son i told you your father left us and he's dead tommy shows up at teresi's wife's house somehow he stumbles on a picture and a photo album of him as a baby and Teresi holding him. And I was trying to figure out if my husband came home with a picture of himself holding a baby, I would be like, hey, whose baby is this? And why is it so important that we put this baby who I've never met in the photo album? Like you had to pass that picture to your wife because I don't really see Teresi sitting down scrapbooking in his free time. And she had to gently place it in the album and put the plastic over it. If I was his wife, I would have many questions. And now she does. Cause she's like, oh, Egan, I don't know no Egan's from Brooklyn. He's like, no, we're Egan's from Queens. And she was like, okay, what's your mom's name? Tommy was trying to duck. And she was like, no, no. What is your mother's name? You know, Mrs. Teresi is about to be up in prison with old white. Like who the f is Kay Egan? Tommy goes back to his mother with the picture and finally she confesses. She's like, yes, he is your father, but he's dangerous and can't be trusted. Ma'am, your son is dangerous and can't be trusted. The apple did not fall far from the tree. But then she goes up to the prison to meet with Teresi. And I'm like, how did you get on the visitors list? And she's like, you stay away from Tommy or I'm going to tell your wife. I don't know how well that bodes for Kate though. Teresi strikes me as a man who would kill the mother of his child. I, I feel like Kate should really be careful. And he told her as much. It was very like Weebay and Delanda. Sorry, I compare everything to the wire. Ghost pops up on Turtle when he's sitting outside his daughter's school. Are no places sacred, sir? You got kids. You know how wild that behavior is. Ghost wants to know why Mock was at Turtle's house. He's very paranoid that Turtle has too much information on him and Tommy. Turtle's like, no, I, I would never flip on you. You could trust me. In TV translation means I cannot be trusted, not even a little bit, which we find out later is true because Turtle's always been like, oh, I destroyed the computer. I destroyed the computer. But yet here you are, sir, with said laptop, putting it in some mailbox, etc. P.O. box. That's not going to end well. Ghost speaks to Tommy about going to war with the Jimenez. Ghost is like, you know what? We could talk our way out of this one because they owe us one for Lobos. Tommy's like, I've already had a conversation with them. I can't go back and beg. He was like, you know what? You should do it. Ghost is like, I'm, I'm out the drug game. Ghost goes and talks to the Jimenez siblings. He low-key, lightly threatens them. Brother Jimenez gets upset. Sister Jimenez is a little calmer. She's like, we'll roll it around. We'll get back to you. Which eventually they accept. But for all the wrong reasons, that will be detrimental to Tommy and probably Ghost as well. Angie goes to see Terry. 
She wants him to know that they found out that Mike was the mole. And by the way, he'll be locked up at MCC Correctional Facility starting XYZ ABC at XYZ time. You ain't slick, chick. I knew exactly what she was up to. And this is what's always bothered me about Angie. Ma'am, you act so self-righteous all the time, but you are just as greasy and dirty as everybody else. Like, I know Mike was dirty, but that's something that the legal system is supposed to handle. Not, you know, you as his colleague, you get so upset with ghosts. Like, oh, you're a murderer. You're a drug dealer. So you're not a drug dealer, ma'am, but you're a murderer just the same. Like you didn't dunk it, but like you threw the ball to the person who did. Terry's old shiesty ass. He shows up at Ghost's apartment. Tasha's like, oh my gosh, what are you doing here? This is just a pop-up for you. He actually called your husband and told him that he was on the way. Terry tells James that he's been cleared of all charges, that Mike is the mole. Tasha and James have a big hug and Tasha looks over at Terry like, sorry. James goes off and leaves Tasha and Terry to stand there talking. But Tasha tries to explain and apologize and Terry's like, we'll talk about it over dinner. Sir, did you just ask this woman out? with her husband in the next room? The ball's on you, sir. Like, you're out of control. Ghost quickly calls Tommy and Turtle over to his office. He wants them to know that Mike has been caught. They start going through all the information that Mike could possibly know about, how he could land all of them in jail with Rico charges, no less. Tommy's like, well, he's gotta die. Ghost is like, all right, so who can we get to do it? Now, Ghost, you have spent every episode this season indignant that somebody would accuse you of killing somebody in law enforcement. Ghost, you about to kill somebody in law enforcement and you didn't double blink on it. Y'all got Turtle all up in this mix and Turtle ain't about this life. What y'all need to be talking about is killing Turtle. I love Turtle. I don't want nothing bad to happen to Turtle. Turtle gotta die. Turtle is gonna set y'all up and bring down everything. Tommy's like, you know what? I'll just call my dad, ask him to take care of it. Tommy calls his dad. He's like, hey dad, I need you to kill an FBI agent. Dad was like, okay. And even Tommy was shook. He was like, you don't, you don't have any questions about that? He was like, no, we're family. That's what family does for one another. Tommy, you are your father's son, sir. You got it honest. The Jimenez siblings meet up with Dre and Cristobal. Dre is like, hey, ain't no need for a war. Diego is like, why should I trust you? You're flipping on your boss. Dre hit them with, I want to be the best goddamn drug dealer in New York City. Which, if you recall from, I think, the first episode of this whole show, Tasha says to Ghost, like, this is why I married you. Dre is Ghost 2.0 in terms of the lies, in terms of the ambition. He don't quite wear his suits like Ghost just yet. You gotta grow into that. Dre was like, look, I have access to 20-something clubs around the world. We can move drugs in all these clubs and we can make a ton of money together. Diego likes that, but he also tells Dre, I will kill you if you this up. Sister Jimenez is like, we'll agree to Ghost and Tommy's terms, but just so you know, you ain't got a whole lifetime. Mike, whose hours, not days, whose hours were numbered as soon as Tommy called his father, is standing in the jail hospital looking out the window. As someone in the game, he had to know that this wasn't going to end with him living. There was no way he was just going to flip and be able to walk away from all this. There he is looking out the window and some doctor comes in right quick, shanks him right in the jugular. He bleeds out on the floor. Later, the FBI team, Mock, Angie, and Sax come in. They're like, oh my God, how could this happen? Sax was like, the only people that knew about this was us. He pretty much knows that it's Angie. Angie goes over to the body in Spanish. She says, this was for Greg. You're very self-righteous over a man you were f***ing just to get information out of. Like, you think you're so much better than everybody and you're a killer just like everybody else, Angie. Get over yourself. Ugh. I still don't like her, obviously. <laughs> Ghost is in his plaid suit, hanging out at the house with Councilman Tate. They're having a drink when Tyreek walks in, talking about he wants to go away to school. Tate compliments Ghost on how wonderful Tyreek is. He's like, oh yes, he's everything I ever dreamed. Tyreek, your son who's beating his sister until she bruises, talking wild to his mama, who's addicted to lean. Tyreek is all you've ever dreamed of, really. You have no clue that your son is just like you. But maybe that's ish parents like to say to other people so everybody thinks they have the perfect life. But Ghost Sir, you are not fooling Councilman Tate. Councilman Tate says, oh, you're so lucky to have a son like that. He's just making chit chat. Ghost is like, oh, we make our own luck. You arrogant SOB. The look that Councilman Tate gives Ghost 
gives everything that he's thinking away. You are about to get played, Ghost, and worse than Stringer Bell. You about to get ran for all your money. You're just so happy to be out the game and think you're in the big leagues. You don't know what you're up against. The double crossing of drug dealers ain't got shit on politicians, sir. You had money and street power. They have actual power. It's it's slightly different. So let me know what you thought about this episode. Let me know what you thought about Angie. Let me know what you thought about Tyreek. Also, please subscribe. For those of you that have subscribed, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And for those of you that have not, what are y'all waiting for? Hit the subscribe button. And yeah, I'll see you next week.